Welcome to yet another Kings of War Battle Report. Third edition, it's Goblins vs Dwarves. And to guide you through this epic adventure, here I am in the corner of the screen. But don't forget our little friend, the arrow, to point our eyeballs to various uh, points of interest on the screen. Now then, let's dive straight in, shall we? Raise scenario 2,000 points, Goblins vs Dwarves, and I'm armed with my army list right here and of course easy army hasn't been updated yet so we're having to make do with uh, the various methods of creating army lists such as battle scribe that don't currently have any unit stats on them so uh, there's a bit of a dark age for kings of war players at the moment until we can uh, get that figured out uh, i don't know whether there's a particular time limit that they have to wait before they can start putting stats in these things but anyway, here we go. We've got the goblins on this side here. And you may remember my goblin list that I was running a lot in second edition. There was an awful lot of trolls and an awful lot of war machines. And my favorite list that I was running towards the end of that edition isn't actually possible anymore because trolls unlock less stuff and fleabag sniffs don't unlock anything because they're irregular now. So what have I done to remedy this? Certain things have got a little bit more expensive as well. It just seems like the overall 2,000 points level leaves you with slightly less on the table, people are noticing. So, let's have a look what we've got here. So, starting on my right flank, we've got a more beast regiment. And more beasts have been given a little bit of a boost since Yellow Bellied is no more. So, if you like to run those as just sitting in front of your lines, for example, they're not going to get stuck there anymore. Uh, there's a troop of them, and we've got two regiments of Fleabag Rider Sniffs, so more irregular units, so nothing being unlocked over here. Then we've got a flagget mounted with the Diadem of Dragonkind, the old classic, still seems to work to some extent. The only issue with these individuals now is that they're not quite as handy at blocking enemy units off, which they were very useful for in 2nd edition. Then we've got a horde of sharp sticks here. No upgrades as yet. We've got one of the War Trombones behind them. War Trombones have only taken a very minor hit in this edition. Not much of one as far as I'm concerned. Then we've got a Mounted Wiz, and he has the Boomstick, which just increases your Lightning Bolt now. So he's actually got Lightning Bolt 6, which is very, very tasty. Then we've got this big blob down here. So this huge blob of death. This is three Troll Hordes surrounding a King with two war trombones and a troll bruiser at the front. So, the king has Jareth's pendant which gives a headstrong aura, so everybody there is going to have headstrong as long as they're within six inches of the king, and it's only taken on kings on foot. So very very important and makes it worthy of putting in there. It means you don't have to upgrade your trolls with headstrong items if you're going to keep them nearby or with any other item to limit the effects of wavered. Uh, provided you keep them close to the king and it also gives you the king who isn't bad at fighting and a little bit of shooting himself and of course inspiring so you'll notice that my inspiring characters are kind of bunched right together here uh, but we'll get into the overall battle plan shortly and then over on this side we've got another troll horde this one has the boots of striding so i've put them opposite this forest hoping that they'll do some fighting in there for one turn and use their boots to just stride straight through it unhindered and kick serious amounts of butt and then behind them we've got another more beast regiment so with the raise scenario there are three tokens on either side of the table and you can only remove the ones on your opponent's side to gain a victory point by controlling them at the end of your turn and then there's one in the middle which you can only claim at the end of the game to act as a bit of a tiebreaker so let's go through the dwarf lines shall we so we've got a troop of brock riders we've got earth elemental horde brock rider regiment and then there are two cannons back there. Very nasty indeed. Then there is a horde of shield breakers. There's a berserker brock lord there. And he has the blade that doubles his attacks against individuals. So not very handy against this list. Against my abyssal dwarves that will be very handy. Because you know I like to run Basusu or Basusan running around back there. And Bracky of course. So they wouldn't like to face that sword. And there's also a stone priest in there somewhere as well. Over here, there's a Standard Bearer. The Standard Bearer and the Stone Priest both have access to Bane Chant. Then there is a regiment of, I believe these are 
bit iron guard. The the lesser of the two dwarf regular infantry regiments. They're the defense five version, so the cheaper one. A couple of organ guns there. There's another regiment of if I'm getting the name wrong then I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments. Iron Guard we're gonna go with. Then there's some sharpshooters back there and a bombard. So three different types of war machine to contend with. And the objectives, there's one sitting right in the center there, as mentioned. And on turn one. So I'll go through my overall strategy for this game as turn one unfolds. You'll notice that most of the objectives were down at that end of the table. So over here, I've only got this unit, really. This is the only thing that's not hugely fast. These two units are both very fast, of course, the Fleabag Rider Sniffs. So they can easily be sent back over to this side. But what I really want to do with them is use one of them to just try and scoop up this objective and hope that my opponent doesn't come near it because he's only got a couple of shooting things over here and one small infantry unit that's easy to block up. So if I can get one of them to just sit on that at the end of turn two, then that's going to be quite easy to snatch that objective because you can only start claiming them at the end of that turn. And then once they've done that, they can then turn their attention away from this area if I don't feel like killing that little shooting battery and heading into the main fight, which will be taking place over there. And this unit is just hiding from the view of the dwarves there. And I've made a bit of a mistake here, I think, because I believe I deployed the sniffs a little bit too far back because they only have an 18 inch shooting range now. So when you're just playing things by eye and thinking roughly what kind of range you need to get them in to be effective in the turn, then you have to get them a little bit closer than you used to. So they're actually out of range to do any shooting this turn. So they're just sitting, they are kind of on the hill, so they can be seen, but anyone shooting them will be shooting at them with cover from back there. So, because they're not considered on the hill. So anything that ignores cover won't mind that though, and there are some war machines around that don't uh, care about cover one bit. In the middle there, the sharp sticks have gone right up into the middle, and I did choose to take first turn, by the way. The downside to that is that I could have deprived my opponent of one turn of organ gun shooting by going second. But I felt with this scenario, I want the battle to be taking place very, very close to these objectives. And I want to even jump on some of them before my opponent uh, has the chance to do anything. And the further forward we have the battle, for as far as I'm concerned, because I'm up against dwarves, most of their units are slow, then it's going to be difficult for them to push past and pick up the objectives, which are here and here. and. The other one is down at the other end. But these are the two main ones. This area here. If you, I can win this zone here, then I should be able to win the game, I think. Got my wizard in range to use his spell. These trolls have gone right the way up, putting themselves intentionally in charge range of the troop of Brock Riders. And taking a little bit of a gamble, but thinking, you know what, they're not going to kill us in one round. We'll be fine. Everybody else is staying out of charge range, though, unless there's a monumental surge from the Stone Priest on the earth elementals there. And of course I've got the three war trombones here who are in prime position so that if it gets into a war of attrition in the middle and the enemy end up winning, the trombones will just mop up whatever's left. So they're a nice insurance policy and they're also staying out of harm's way back there as well. The wizard put some damage onto one of the organ guns, not enough to worry it at this stage though. So not too much accomplished that turn but I have pushed forward and taken valuable ground towards the enemy. So turn one for the dwarves and of course the troop of Brocks. Uh, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's bait exactly because it's not some huge trap that they've walked into. But I do want to be engaged in this fight here because no one else can really join in at the moment. There's woods blocking anyone else from looking this way and everyone else is too slow. So I think if I can fight them now and that it means I won't have to be fighting every enemy unit in turn three or possibly turn for depends if i stand off and let the enemy let's just zoom out a bit if i stand off to here for example and try and avoid the enemy because the brocks are behind elementals so they're going to be a little bit slower i could probably hold off for a couple of turns without being attacked by them and while that would be fine i really want to be fighting up here as i mentioned so what i want to be doing is fighting this unit in turn one so i want the enemy to attack me turn one turn two maybe i can kill them uh, if they somehow get lucky and kill that unit, I've got other units back here that can go after them as well. And then in the next turn, I would then have to face something else. I can't stay out of range of everything. But I could possibly get within range of this blob here and still maybe avoid them for a turn. So you can face the enemy bit by bit and not face all of it at once. 
especially on the same unit. You don't want to get multi-charged with trolls because I've got them in that headstrong bubble, so if they get wavered, that's going to be nice. So getting multi-charged means they're more likely to die than get wavered, and also regeneration as well. So you want them to just take bits of damage each rather than being multi-charged. I think that explains the gist of my battle plan and my positioning here. So we'll see how much damage they can do to the trolls. It's a risk because they're not inspired. So we'll see how that goes. In the middle, everything's pushing up a bit, uh, but the elementals and the brocks have kind of switched places. The elementals had to edge backwards a little bit, I think, to let the brocks through, which is a little bit annoying for my enemy, I would say, because they don't want to push forward and get into range of all three of these units because they would just get munched alive if they did that. And they'd probably even be hesitant to get in range of both of these units. And with measuring from the corners of bases for charging now instead of the leader point, then certain things do have more of a threat range, including these two hordes that are staring down each other there. I don't think that horde is on the hill, but I think they can be I think they can see over the hill actually because they've got their leader point on it. So they they have a throwing mastiff, I think, that they're gonna be able to use now. So the Iron Guard there have positioned themselves that they can still be seen by the more beasts, uh, but if the more beasts were to charge them, it would be hindered in the flank, which means that I can't prevent them uh, from heading in this direction, essentially. Trolls take some shooting damage, and the cannons just land an obscene number of hits, and the organ guns as well, and this troll unit is up to nine wounds. Sharpshooters and more likely the Bombard did some damage over here, two damage onto those sniffs. And the Throwing Mastiffs are launched as well. Uh, I'm not sure if they do anything though. So two wounds onto these sniffs and that actually wavers the unit, which isn't nice. And both these Troll Hordes get wavered as well, this one on nine damage, this one on four. So I'm more pleased about this waver. These guys, uh, you'd probably expect them to get wavered in inspiring range, but then they do have shattering on them as well with the war machine that did damage to them. So uh, they were kind of on the edge, but I'm thankful they've only got wavered and not killed. This unit are a little bit unfortunate to get wavered there, uh, but they are within the headstrong bubble, so hopefully they'll both be okay. Over on this side, these trolls take six damage, but no ill effects there. So we'll be hoping to kill those brocks next turn. So if I can kill those brocks, I will have the enemy contained mostly into this little bubble here, and I will be not exactly surrounding them, but kind of a pincer movement going on. And this troll horde, of course, has the boots of striding, so if I can get them charging through the woods and everyone else making clean charges. Now, the one issue for my opponent not pushing forwards is that when this troll unit, assuming they all pass their headstrong tests, if this unit is able to get off the uh, field there, that means I'm going to be making lots of unhindered charges when it does come to fighting. Had they pushed straight forward and I'd been able to charge in with everything, I probably would have been able to kill a unit, but this unit would have been hindered. So that's always something to consider. In this circumstance, it probably wasn't best to push right in there because, I mean, just look at all this death. It doesn't really matter if one of them's hindered. They're still going to kick serious amounts of butt. And there's that side. So the enemy have left this token open for me. So this unit is going to be able to get to within three inches of that uh, because I made sure when I was placing it and checked at the start of this turn as well that they can be within three inches of it without having to touch the difficult terrain there. So they're just going to park themselves around here uh, with their nimble and moving at the double. So that's going to be nice. And this unit ideally would have liked these dwarves to be facing forward so I could charge them in the front which will kind of tie them up and block them off from going in this direction. But I don't mind taking the flank charge, but it will be hindered. So turn two for the goblins, and I go for that flank charge, hindered with the more beasts. Uh, only a couple of damage there. And you can see there that the, the flaggit has popped out from behind the house because he wants to do some flamey diadem action at one of the war machines, and the sniffs are perched within three inches of that token, so they are going to claim that at the end of the turn, so that's disappeared. And in the middle, you can see that I didn't have charge range on any of these enemy units because they didn't want to push in that close. So instead, what I've done is I've thrown the troll bruiser right in front of them in such a way that this Brock unit cannot pivot and charge either of these troll hordes. 
So they're pretty much stuck, which also gets the elemental stuck as well. They're the same height as the Brocks. So there's no ideas for kind of a double charge shenanigan on the Bruiser. Uh, the only way you'd be able to get the ele elementals in is if they moved out the way somehow and then you did some sideways shuffling and some really impressive surging. So you'd be better off just throwing the Brocks in at that point. And there is the Brock Lord as well. So they should be able to kill the Bruiser next turn, but that is going to leave them within charge range because I've moved up close with these guys so if they can survive the shooting next turn and there's this unharmed unit as well and the war trombones so i think it's looking pretty good and in my mind as i was making this move i was thinking kind of like a game of chess where you think i've got more pieces left than my opponent more pieces that are threatening so i'm just going to throw one of them out there as a sacrifice just to put the enemy in a position where i can then just keep exchanging units, because I'm going to ultimately win that battle, if that's what it comes down to. King has done some shooting at the Brocks, only one damage. And these trolls do manage to kill the Brocks over on that side. So, if we look at the little bit of a wide shot now, you can see that what I was saying about just exchanging units. I've also got a troll horde over here, so I do have a big... It's not big, but it's a significant number of units advantage. Units that can actually affect the game, kill things, and score on objectives, which of course the Brock can't. So the trolls are looking in this direction now, so they're very threatening. And I've also got some more beasts back there as well who can score, unlike these little individuals around here and the war trombones. So, uh, forward we go. So you can see how they're looking there. So they should be able to join in with the fight next turn as well. Uh, my opponent won't be able to kill off all three of these units with shooting without some serious good fortune. And one of the organ guns is removed as well, with the Diadem of Dragonkind and the Lightning Bolt. So you can see kind of that pincer action I was going for now. So that one dwarf unit has kind of thrown its life away there. It could have stood off, potentially, but in this scenario you don't want to be standing back too much, as I was saying, because you've got no chance of getting through to the objectives that you actually need. So there should be some flanks opening up for the trolls at some point now. If this unit of Brox charges in there, if they don't manage to kill the Bruiser, there's a nice tasty open flank. If they do kill the Bruiser, which way are they going to turn? Because whichever way they turn, something will have the charge on them, because I'm not staying within charge range of any of these units here. So they're going to find it difficult to cause much of a blockage, especially with these units down here as well. So, moving on, turn two for the Dwarves. So, let's see what kind of blockages they can throw out. The Iron Guard here have put themselves in position to get in front of the Horde to stop them charging the flank of this Horde, presumably. And this Horde have just popped up onto the hill and pivoted to face the threat, so nothing is going to flank them. And the Bruiser has been charged by the Brox there, as expected. Uh, the Elementals are a little bit stuck. Anytime I see... The two enemy units that I'm most concerned about right behind each other, I immediately think, okay, I don't necessarily want to kill that front unit as fast as possible, but I want to stop them from both getting into the fight for a while. So I don't need to overcommit in there, just throw something in their way to block them up for a bit while everything else is getting in into position. Uh, this unit here are going to possibly kill the Morbis in one go, because they're not the most survivable of things. And then we've got some cannon fire which targets the unit out on the left flank, which killed the Brox, and chips away at them a bit, and at this unit as well. So, <clears throat> the Bombard and the Sharpshooters, and the Organ Gun. Quite a bit of damage onto the, the Sniff unit that took the objective last turn, and killed them. And Trolls wavered, but they're within the Headstrong Bubble. And this unit, Trolls on the left, actually get wavered as well, even though they, they got themselves up to less damage than they were at last time. They were wounded. They became wavered this time with a good nerve roll, and they are outside of the aura of Headstrong. So they're going to be stuck, which has cut off part of my game plan there. And these more beasts only get wavered, which is a bit of a bonus. I was expecting them to be dead by now. And the, the Bruiser is butchered by these Brocks. And you can see how much easier life is for these Brocks now. They don't have to worry about being charged from that direction. Because had that unit lived, they would have been eating multiple unit charges there. At the very least, it, if they got the best setup possible, I imagine they would have been taking two front charges from... Oops, let's not move that. 
two front charges from the unit here and the unit here into that facing, which would almost certainly kill the unit. Uh, this unit would have been able to use its boots of striding and that would have taken them out. This unit could have gone into there. There's another unit back here that could also go into that unit. So that double charge into this horde uh, possibly would have killed them as well. So that unit becoming wavered is quite an irritation uh, because could have wiped out the center next turn had that not happened. And we'll see if these guys can even pass their headstrong rule now. But they're maybe skating on good fortune to be alive anyway, this unit. Turn three. So... The surviving sniffs are just hiding behind the hill so they can't be targeted by the shooting battery and there is one of my opponent's objectives that he wants to go and raise. So I'm just staring at that so that in the last turn I can jump out in front of it or near it to block up the unit from getting to it. And the wizard and the diadem wielding flagget have put some damage onto that organ gun and wavered it. The horde of sharp six have charged into this regiment of dwarves. And this troll horde have gone into the front of this horde of shield breakers, put nine damage on them, so a double charge on them possibly would have killed them. And then I did get to do a double charge onto the Brox, but one of them had to be a hindered charge, uh, since the other unit back there was wavered. And I turned them out of the way slightly so that the more beasts could get past, just in case the worst should happen and maybe I get a really terrible nerve roll, maybe a double one or something on the Brox. I've got some backup. Uh, nearby as well and these guys are gonna uh, go round possibly straight through the trees because they don't mind that that's the position they had to turn to to allow the more beasts to get past and next turn if they come under attack possibly from the brock lord they're only on two damage with their regeneration so they won't mind that too much and if they have to get into the fight through the trees they haven't used their boots of striding yet so it's still looking okay but i expect to lose some some troll hordes possibly one of them next turn, because there's the Elementals, there's the Brock Lord, uh, there's cannons staring right at me, so I'd expect at least one unit to die next time. These two units are both wounded. This one's a little bit, this one is untouched. So, it's looking quite healthy, and I've actually picked up an objective as well. This one here, the double troll charge on the Brocks, it would have picked it up even if I hadn't killed them, because I've just got some hordes here and that was only a regiment. So that's two objectives picked up by me now, so I'm leading 2-0, so the plan is going quite well so far. Turn 3 for the Dwarf, so we have a double charge, the Elemental Horde and the Brock Lord into this Troll Horde, the more damaged one. And of course leaving this Horde unattacked this turn, because they're in the difficult terrain. So they're going to have to make a fresh charge that isn't a counter charge next time, which means that they'll be hindered by it. So that's probably the best choice there, try and finish off this unit, you don't want to just plink away damage on the regenerating trolls. And the horde has gone back into my troll horde there, and these two units are just going to be battling it out. I don't think I did any damage with that charge last turn, which is annoying. And over here, uh, there's not too much going on there, these units are still stuck. Uh, the organ gun passes its headstrong test and does some damage to the flagget. And the shooting battery up here puts more damage on him, and he becomes wavered, so he's not going to be able to use his diadem next turn. And look at this. Iron Guard into the more Beast troop. Seven wounds, double one. That's what I like to see. That's going to keep them tied up for a bit longer, keep them away from that objective for another turn. So hopefully I might be able to hold on to it and stop them taking it entirely. Now this unit takes some damage from the regiment here, and they become wavered. So a nice big juicy nerve roll there to waver them on only 10 damage. Uh, lots of things being wavered so far. That unit of trolls are actually killed by the shield breakers. I think they were bane chanted. So uh, quite a healthy amount of damage there. So that troll horde is dead. And that's how they are positioned afterwards. And the other troll horde right here is dead as well, as expected. So cleared out a few units but we're going to see if my trombone backup strategy is going to work now I suspect it will I've got charges available here uh, so that's how the Brock Lord turns himself afterwards so I can choose to charge straight into them if I want or I could charge the Brock Lord I've got the more beasts here I've got these trolls who could possibly come round I don't think they can see anyone yet though and the trombones is just going to try and eat that horde that's on the hill because it's already up to nine damage so three trombones on it I would expect to kill it next turn. Turn four for the goblins. 
Uh, so, over here, uh, these more beasts, who are double wand a minute ago, go back into combat and don't do too much. But actually, is that a waiver? It looks like they do waiver that unit, but they're headstrong anyway, so they should be fine. And this guy can't do much because he's wavered. I can lightning bolt the organ gun, but I don't think it does anything this turn. And here are the trombones, moved into the optimum position to shoot the horde on the hill and completely toast it gently. And the reason that unit had different basing, by the way, is because my opponent borrowed a big horde of my dwarves. Because when we were looking at our lists before the game, we actually realized that due to the lack of army building software that's available now, uh, the army wasn't actually legal. And we didn't want people calling that out in the comments. So we had to make a, a slight change before the game and bring that horde in, which is why they don't map. So the trolls charge into the elementals here. Don't do too much, but the king went in there as well. And not too shocking because they were hindered coming out of that wood there. So I didn't expect to kill them right now. Just want to start chipping away at them because again, trombones will be able to finish them off hopefully. And I've got these trolls down here. So my opponent now has very, very little chance of getting to these two objectives. So the only way my opponent can even get a draw out of this game is to get the objective on the right, which isn't looking that great either right now, and also hold the middle objective at the end, which is possible, but I've got a lot of units around here for just one unit here. So these two units, one of them needs to get the center. And it doesn't look like it's going to be that one because they're so far away and there's units to fight here. And they're not pushing through in a million years to get through to these tokens. So at the worst, I could be going for a draw here. It could depend if we get turn seven also. Turn four for the dwarves. So this wavered unit just go backwards a bit to allow some shooting to go in at the more beasts, which will almost certainly finish them off. The Brock Lord and the elementals go into the troll horde here. Now we did play around with the positioning for these elementals to figure out whether they could move and then be surged into the flank of the trolls, but it wasn't actually possible. With the space they have available and the pivoting that would be necessary, uh, they wouldn't be able to find a legal position to then be surged into the flank uh, with the king and the brock lord there as well. And down here this fight is going to rumble on. Uh, with a good roll they could take out that horde this time. My opponent choosing not to target the war trombones with anything yet. Uh, there's not much that can actually see them to be fair. And cannon. Put some damage onto the more beasts that are my backup more beasts. And these guys have actually got an option next turn. Let me show you here. So these more beasts, being nimble as they are, could potentially get this token and claim another one, which would guarantee me a win, virtually. Uh, but it depends what I do with the trolls, because they would have to physically fit through that gap. And there is a war trombone there as well, so it wouldn't necessarily be uh, the easiest. I mean, if, you, if you're just moving at the double, uh, then it's not a huge issue, the fact that the trolls are there. But if they want to do any kind of charging into the flank here, that's going to be an issue. I think my options were move out the double onto this token here, or join in with a charge, or wait as kind of backup and just make sure the enemy aren't getting onto any tokens. So we'll see what I go with in a minute. And that will become clear. So they do take a bit of damage though. And the flag it is now dead. Not wave it again. And the more beasts over on this side are dead. So this unit next turn are going to be able to turn around and start walking towards the right objective as I look at it. And in the middle, this unit takes more damage. Troll Horde gets wavered. They're within the headstrong bubble though. So they'll hope to bounce straight back from that. And there's how we're looking. So very healthy. More beasts have the option of going to collect that objective next turn. Turn five. Horde back in here. Again, do zero damage to the dwarves, which is quite comical. Uh, the trombones all unleash onto this unit of earth elementals because the trolls failed their headstrong roll. So I decided to shoot up the elementals instead. Got them to very close to death now, so I sh should be able to kill them next time. This unit still wavered. I decided to leave the more beasts down here because those trolls failing their headstrong test means that they are going to get cleared. They are going to die next turn. And I feel like if I only have one unit of trolls here, 
it's possible that the enemy could punch through and get to these objectives. So the more beasts decide to stay here just to provide another speed bump for the enemy. So I've got another thing just to throw at them, to slow them down and stop them getting into these tokens, rather than going to claim that one. And there's how it's looking. You can see that unit has got quite a way to go to make up the ground on that objective. And I've got this unit here that can just whoosh, thrust themselves in front of it at the death and hopefully cause a, a severe blockage. Turn five for the dwarves now. Uh, or is this, whose turn was that? That was the, that was the goblin turn, yeah. So we're on to the dwarves. So these guys have gone back in here. The Brock Lord has actually run up there. And all the characters are kind of chilling out in this zone here. I'm not sure why he's up there, but I'm sure there's a reason. I think possibly he's just committing more resources to the middle now, trying to get a draw, because this objective is going to be important. So this unit needs to survive and push onto it at the end of the game to try and get a draw, and just ignore this flank now completely. Over here, these dwarves are slowly edging their way there, but they've only got one more turn, possibly, to get on it. The bombard and the cannons uh, make mincemeat of the war trombones, and kill both of them, because there's only that one left now, of the three. Uh, the horde of sharp sticks go down without doing any damage to that regiment. How embarrassing. And they move sideways. Now this is quite important here. Because if they stay where they are, next turn I can take that objective. Quite easily. Uh, whether I would do is a, another question. But the fact that they move sideways means they are now on the hill. Well they're not actually on the hill, but they can be seen across the hill. Important distinction in some cases, but uh, for this game, it's pretty much the same effect because my combat units over there can now see them, which might be important. And they're also further away from this middle objective, which means I've now got the option to try and block them with this wizard. Now, you may be thinking, well, he's a yielding individual. How can you do any kind of blocking? Well, I'll show you in a minute. The troll horde is dead right here from the elementals. And they just turn around a bit. So, if I hadn't left the more beasts here, it would maybe be a little bit tight whether or not I could defend both of these objectives from the elementals with just the trolls. It seems likely that I would be able to, but it wouldn't be guaranteed. And the Brock Lord might have stayed over here as well if I'd already snatched up that objective. So, the troop of more beasts can now no longer have any chance of taking that next turn because this unit have gone sideways onto it, which is a new feature of this edition, moving sideways after a, a killing the enemy unit in combat. And going on to turn six now. So, potentially my last turn, and the Sniffs have just gone straight forward in front of the unit here, and they just want to try and block them in and shoot them. Uh, there's no way I could have sat on the objective and prevented them uh, from moving onto it, because, let's look here, so if I sit far enough back away from the objective so that I can contest it and not be charged, that means I'm open to being shot by the sharpshooters and the bombard, which would almost certainly kill the unit, I think. And I've decided to just move forward onto the objective and shoot them. Or actually, I may have moved... Actually, how far does that look like? It looks like just one move, because I decided to try and shoot them off, because I've got the lightning bolt as well. So I could have moved them even further forward and just sat them an inch away and then hope that they don't overrun far enough after killing me. But I thought maybe I could kill them because I've got the wizard in the middle here. So his positioning is important as well. So this unit cannot see him. And because he is there, they can't just turn on the spot and move to within three inches of this objective. Even though he's yielding, they can't end their move on top of him. So they're going to have to go round him or just turn on the spot. So whatever they do, they're quite likely to end up still on the hill, which is quite important because I'll be able to charge them from over there, from the units I've got who are still alive over there, if need be. And it means in turn six, they can't just move and snatch this objective. So if it ends on turn six, I'm going to win, basically because of this move. And you can see that the trolls and the more beasts have successfully killed off the elementals. And then afterwards, the more beasts have spun round. So they are looking into the flank of that unit. Trolls can also see them because they're touching the hill as well. So there's a Brock Lord here, and 
what was I thinking that my opponent's strategy would be here? So, the trolls are the biggest threat to that unit. So, if we look at it from here, my opponent needs to kill those guys, because I didn't manage to kill them, obviously, because they're still there. He needs to kill this unit of sniffs, and sit on that objective and claim it at the end of the turn, so that'll make it 2-1. And he needs this, because he's not going to get to within range of any of the objectives over here, so he needs this one. So he needs there to be a turn 7. So he needs this unit to be facing in that direction, so they can get that objective in turn 7. In order for them to do that, they have to turn their back on my units here. So, it doesn't sound like it's going to be a fun time, but if you have a yielding individual like the Brock Lord, who for some reason isn't mighty, if you do damage in close combat to an enemy unit, you can stop them from just ignoring you for movement purposes, because they're then disordered. So I was thinking that the Brock Lord would charge into the trolls because they're by far the biggest threat for a rear charge on that unit and leave the more beasts alive who wouldn't have that many attacks to use in there. I'd be able to use the king as well. But then there's also shooting that could possibly kill the more beasts in one go. So I would have thought that the Brock Lord would charge into the trolls next turn. Let's find out. So this unit, of course, turns round because they need to be facing this way if in case there's a turn seven in which case they could move straight through him and just land about here or overrun that guy assuming they're still alive from any rear charges they have to face because they're still touching the hill and the the king actually is charged by the brock lord and a stone priest charges into the trolls hoping to do one damage so I can kind of understand, also my opponent pointed out that he wanted to get some use out of the blade that doubled the attacks against individuals. So going into the king for that reason might be a good idea, but the stone priest is not going to wound the trolls most of the time. So he's not going to disorder them, so that means that they're going to be able to ignore all these individuals here and just go straight through and rear charge that unit. So had the Brock Lord gone in there, he would almost certainly do damage and stop them, which would have meant it was down to the more beasts who have far less attacks. So, we'll see. The Bombard and the Cannons put some damage onto the more beasts, and I'm not sure if that Water on Bone was already wounded, was it? No, it doesn't look like it. So, some damage done there, and they both become wavered, but they are within the Headstrong Bubble if the King survives. So there's a possible reason for trying to kill the king there because of that headstrong bubble. And we'll see if it ultimately pays off. The king doesn't die though. And these sniffs only get wavered, so my opponent definitely needs turn seven now because this objective under here is not controlled by anybody. They're both regiments. And they both have, I think they have the same unit strength. Uh, let's just check actually. Let's see what the flea bag sniff. Uh, unit strength is unit strength 2 there are some units that have a unit strength that's different from what you might expect for their classification so the situation as it stands the trolls don't take any wounds from the stone priest there's some wavering going on here so these trolls can ignore everything as long as the more beasts get out of the way which they can do because they're nimble so they can do a bit of a rotation, allow the troll horde to just come straight through here, ignore all the individuals, and charge into the rear of these dwarves, since they are touching the hill so they can be seen. So the dwarves are almost certainly going to die if there's a turn 7. And there is a turn 7, which my opponent needed and now needs some good luck. So the trolls get that charge in after the more beasts turned out of the way. Trolls charge into the rear, obviously butcher the unit, and the king just has a go fighting back at the Brock Lord and doesn't do much and the trolls don't overrun far enough to get on this objective but my opponent has nothing here that can claim it anyway so not much accomplished there over here nothing going on either so all my opponent can accomplish now in the next turn is to kill that unit and claim that objective and then lose 2-1 on points I never got to claim uh, this one which has actually slid down off the hill it should be up there somewhere and it's looking very, very healthy. Turn 7 for the Dwarves. He kills the Goblin King this time with a double charge from the Standard Bearer and from the Brock Lord. And over on the other side, Sniffs go down. They're toast. 
Iron Guard go and pick up that objective. So that's one for them. So it's going to end 2 1 to the goblins. So, all in all, uh, possibly it was a mistake not sending the more beasts after that objective when they had the opportunity to do so. Because in the end, it could have easily turned into a draw with that turn 7 roll. Had my opponent charged into the trolls and disordered them, then it could have got a little bit spicy. Uh, because these guys became wavered, and yeah, most of the time they're going to be ignoring that waver because of the headstrong aura, so they could have still rearcharged the dwarves, but there's no guarantee that would have killed the unit. Uh, but overall, I think it was a pretty solid plan that just could have maybe fallen apart with the use of these more beasts not going for that objective and using them to defend instead. It'd be interesting to hear what people think about that and whether you think prioritising defending these two objectives was better uh, than trying to get this one. I would be interested to hear what you think about that. Also the lists as well, what you think on that front. I think, I think this goblin list is actually pretty tasty. I don't know whether it fits in with what the current meta is, because I haven't played that many third edition games, especially with goblins. And all the rage seems to be rabble regiments and of course these bad boys as well you can see that this more pup launcher isn't painted yet but they are all the rage right now and i'm sure that'll be painted at some point overall though pretty pleased with how it performed and i can get rid of the arrow now because that's the end of the battle report i can exclusively reveal what i'm working on right now as well so, in addition to that more pub launcher and a load of Abyssal Dwarf Decimators, I've also got bum bum bum, this guy. Abyssal Dwarf character on Ancient Winged Halfbreed. Look at that big chunk of metal for the head. Now, I've actually put three pins in it to pin it to the plastic body, and I've also heated up and bent the wings so it'll actually fit into my army box, because uh, it's not too tall anymore. So, I need to get that painted. And you can see he doesn't have a weapon either, that's because it's such a tiny thin little piece of metal, his weapon. And if this thing falls over, that's the first thing that would impact the ground, pretty much. So that would immediately bend and snap. So I've decided I'm either just going to give him just holding his fist in the air, or I might put something else in there that's a bit more sturdy. I haven't quite decided yet. So let's put that down. And it's time for me to disappear from the corner of the screen. So, success for the goblins. And... Crushing the dwarves before them, claiming the objectives for their own, reigning supreme on the battlefield. Let's hope that's a sign of things to come in this edition. Uh, whether there's going to be much more use out of the goblins in this edition for a little while remains to be seen, because I am liking playing the Abyssal Dwarves at the moment, and I've got a lot of stuff working on, on that front, and I'm also looking at buying the new Abyssal Dwarves when they come out as well. Some of the new extra tasty stuff, which I'm not going to be able to fit in a list, but I'm going to have to take something out and maybe change up my lists a bit, do some different things, add some variety in there. Should be entertaining, we're all concerned, I'm sure. Uh, what else have I got lined up? Well, there's a couple of Kings of War tournaments coming up this month, so you can look forward to the reports from those. Still not 100% sure what I'm taking. Probably Abyssal Dwarves, but we shall see. One of them's 2,000 points, the other's about 2,300, I think. So we'll see what I can come up with there. Because it feels like there's a little bit missing with the Abyssal Dwarves at that point level, but we'll see. Okay, time to wrap this one up. Don't forget to like the video, obviously. Leave all your comments on the lists, the tactics. Uh, whether you think there were any horrendous rules errors in the game i'm sure there's always one or two that creep in there and uh, don't forget to check out all the links in the description all the various social media shenanigans going on there all the various fundraising shenanigans going on down there and all that remains to be said on that note is good night out there whatever you are